Welcome to the Air Gun Show. In this week's episode, I'm going to be taking a look at a multi shot PCP that gives brilliant value for money. First up, though, I'm out on what turns out to be a really hectic session on a new squirrel feeder. Well, as you can see, I'm out on the squirrels and it's going pretty well. Now, I must admit, I was pretty keen to get out on this session. The squirrels have been causing a hell of a lot of tree damage in this part of the woods. And I'm eager to get out and try a new feeder that I've had running. Feed's been going down really quickly, which has suggested that it should be a good session. Now, the new feeder is made by Keith Watson from Keith's High Seats. And so far, I'm really impressed with it. It's really well built. It's got a good capacity, so I'm not having to keep constantly filling it up. And uh, also it's got a flap on the feeder, so I'm not losing as much feed to birds as usual, which is uh, hopefully gonna save me a few quid. Anyway, I'm gonna stop talking now and hopefully the feeder will continue to weave its magic.
Well, this is turning out to be a brilliant first eating for this new feeder. I should probably actually point out that it has got proper fixing points at the rear. Um, and it's also got rope straps on the sides. And I've actually been lazy and just nailed it up using those rope straps because the tree I fixed it to is already half dead and the landowner doesn't mind. But it really is worth checking with your landowner before you start attaching things to trees to find out how they want you to fasten them. And if you do use nails, make sure you remove them all when you finish because it's the last thing that a chainsaw operator is going to want to come across if should as and when that tree comes to be felled. Well, you may have noticed that I'm occasionally going against my own advice here, which is usually to wait for squirrels to take a peanut and settle dead still on the feeder before you shoot. But some of these squirrels have been reluctant to settle, and I don't know if you can hear, but there's a buzzard around now. And I think the problem is I've set this feeder out in quite an open spot, which is great for getting clear shots, but I think with birds of prey around, it's making these squirrels feel a bit vulnerable and a bit reluctant to settle. So some of them, if they're looking a bit edgy, I'm taking them pretty, pretty quickly before they settle on the feeder, just so there's no chance of them clocking us and spooking before I get the chance to take that shot. Well, that one drilled straight through and smacked into the feeder, which is pretty impressive for a sub 12 foot pound 177. Although that said, I mean, it's less than 25 meters to the feeder, but it absolutely smacked into the feeder, which thankfully is built like a tank and I'm sure it will stand up to plenty of that. Well, that one grabbed a pellet from the, oh, sorry, grabbed a pellet, grabbed a peanut from the feeder and then tucked itself in against the tree, probably because it felt safer there. But I couldn't initially get on it. Eventually, it leant out a little bit, and gave me a really clear view of its head, really clean headshot that did dangle for a while, but as I've said loads of times before, that's a really typical nervous reaction with a headshot squirrel. They clench up and hang like that, but they are dead as soon as that pellet strikes them in the skull. Well, that was another one 
straight through and smacked into the feeder there. Now the wind's picking up a little bit and we've got some really heavy rain forecast coming in over the next hour or so. So I am going to make that the last one so we don't drench all of Nikki's camera gear. Um, it's been a good session though. I've had plenty of squirrels and what I may well do is head back out this evening on my own with the scope cam once that weather's passed through see if I can shoot a few more and if I do we'll tack them onto the end of this. Um, before we do head off though I will just very quickly talk you through the kit that I've been using this evening. The gun is the Daystate Huntsman Revere and that's the Safari Edition. I've spoken about it loads of times before it's one of my go-to sub 12 air guns. Beautiful looking stock on it very very accurate i've paired it recently with uh, qys domed pellets in the 9.6 grain version and it is just practically pellet on pellet with those i mean i've been impressed with those pellets from the outset they're really clean really consistent and with this gun it just makes for an absolutely lethal combination um, the scope is the mtc king cobra and that's the 4 to 16 by 50 F2. And again, a really nice bit of glass, a nice multi aim point scope. Um, you'll notice that I've not bothered with the scope cam this afternoon, and that was because the weather was forecast to be sunshine and showers even before the worst of the uh, rain rolls in, and I just didn't want my scope cam getting a drenching. Um, but hopefully, Nikki has managed to capture. The action through the main camera today and as I said once this weather's pushed through I'll get back out and if we get some kills you'll see them at the end of this one. A brilliant first session on that feeder there. Next up, I've got a multi-shot PCP that delivers a heck of a lot of bang for your buck. The Walther Rotex RM8 is a true unsung hero of the affordable PCP world. I have the classic version here, distributed in the UK by John Rothery Wholesale. It's accurate, reliable and very solidly constructed. And it has a recommended retail price of just £549. So, this model is just under 100 centimetres long and it weighs 3.7 kilos unscoped. There is also a shorter UC or ultra carbine model available. Now for a bottle gun, this one has quite an elegant classic sporter look to it. The stock is beach and it's got a bit of pattern in the grain and the finish isn't too flashy. 
The stock is ambidextrous and the forend is sufficiently long to keep your leading hand off the bottle. Now it's also adorned with some grippy checkering which extends right around the belly of the stock and around both sides which I think is a really nice touch. Moving back you've got the pistol grip which looks pretty basic but it's nice and steep, it fills the palm well and most importantly it sets me up really well for the trigger. It's also got decent scallops to accommodate the base of your thumb and it facilitates thumb round and thumb up shooting. Also you've got the same panels of checkering on both sides. I really like the lines of this well thought out stock. Now it's kind on the eye and it also features a high cheek piece to ensure correct eye alignment with your scope. Now the butt is finished with a fairly hard ventilated rubber pad which feels really comfortable in the shoulder. The metalwork is neatly finished in black and this air gun is very tidily engineered. Uh, scope attachment is via a dovetail rail which gives you about 15 centimetres of clamping space. Now this model has a 500 millimetre barrel and that is finished with a muzzle brake but that is also removable to reveal a thread for silencer attachment and that is something that I'm sure most hunters will be very happy about. As the 8 in its name suggests, the RM8 runs an 8-shot magazine. Now, I really like it because it's a very simple design and there's almost nothing on it that can go wrong. Uh, to remove it, you pull back the side bolt and the retaining switch and then the magazine pulls out from the left-hand side and loading it couldn't be simpler. It's just a matter of pushing in pellets nose first from the side with the silver-coloured cog. Once it's full, you simply push it back in, return the side bolt, that takes the retaining switch back with it and you're ready to go. I really like the positivity of the side bolt action on this air gun. It's well positioned and it's got a decent sized handle. Now, cycling the bolt, cocks the action, loads a pellet and also activates the automatic safety catch. It is a very reliable mechanism. I have had the UC version of this air gun for years and I have never had a single problem with it. It just keeps the shots coming. I like a wide trigger blade and I'm pleased to say that the RM8 has a nice wide blade with a gentle curve. Uh, it's a two-stage unit and there is some adjustment via an easily accessible screw just in front of the trigger blade. Um, I was perfectly happy with this one straight out of the box. There is a reasonable amount of first stage travel. It then comes to an obvious stop and the second stage brake is clean and very predictable. As I've already said, there's an automatic safety catch which is engaged when you cycle the side bolt. Now it's really conveniently positioned at the rear of the action which makes it very simple to operate with your thumb. Now it's safe when it's back in the rearward position and then you simply push it dead in the centre, depressing the little button as you do so, so that you can nudge it forward making the gun ready to shoot. It's also manually resettable. The 177 calibre test gun is churning out around 11.4 foot-pounds with variation remaining within 7 feet per second over 10 shots and that was with Barracuda 8 pellets taken straight from the tin. Now the RM8 has a 200cc bottle with a maximum fill pressure of 232 bar. Remaining air pressure is displayed on the gauge within the underside of the stock. Working from a full charge, you can expect about 150 shots in 177 calibre and around 180 in 22. Now, when it is time to refill, you simply push the supplied probe into the inlet next to the gauge. I've always been impressed with the accuracy of the RM8. My UC places pellets very precisely and this one has been doing exactly the same with those Barracuda 8s. In short, it is more than accurate enough for live quarry shooting. 
This one has been landing pellet on pellet at 30 meters in calm conditions and shooting from the support of a bench, it's still producing ragged single hole groups at 40 meters. One thing that's really worth highlighting is that overall build quality feels rock solid. Made in Germany, this air gun certainly feels a lot more robust than some that I've used at this price point. Now, I would expect it to give years of good service with very little maintenance, and it's certainly tough enough to stand up to proper use out in the field. So, that is the Walther Rotex RM8. It's tough and accurate, and I reckon it looks pretty good too. It is an air gun that really is tough to beat at its price point, and there are no obvious signs of corner cutting when you shoot it. Now, I've paired it with a Richter Optic Scope, and the whole combo comes in at under 600 pounds. Given the level of performance that I've been getting from it, I think that's remarkable. Sometimes it's hard to focus just to persevere and just to make it, but everything that's within your grasp, you gotta take it. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for in this week's episode, but as ever, I'll be back with more in two weeks' time. Thank you for watching, and please don't forget to like and subscribe. Remember also to check out the uh, subscription office that we have for Airgun World magazine. You should be able to find a link to that in the show description. Also, do tune in for the Airgun World podcast, which goes out fortnightly on Fridays on this channel. Finally, if you aren't already a member of the BASC, check out their website and have a look at the benefits that you could be taking advantage of through Air Gun membership. So, as I said, I'm back again in a fortnight. In the meantime, enjoy your shooting and stay safe. BASC provides for me as a member one voice. It's the one organisation that does it all for me. BASC is, is community. We are BASC. We are BASC. We are BASC.